Hello, everyone. I am Utsav Manend, and I am going to talk about my ethical case study of the Intel Pentium F dev bug. So, to get started after the background of the bug, the Intel Pentium chip was launched on March of 1993, and it was a super implementation of the x86 architecture. And uh, this was also the time when the Intel Insight campaign was in full swing. And uh, as taken directly from Intel's website, this campaign had the goal of uh, telling its customer that the device with Intel chips inside contained quality components and that this Intel chip was defining the state of the art. So moving on, Professor Thomas Nicely discovered the bug about an year later after its launch. He was doing a research project in computational number theory and uh, he noticed that some of the reciprocals being computed by a computer with a Pentium chip were not matching with those computed by the previous generation of Intel chips. And uh, he investigated the cause of this bug and he was finally able to isolate it to the floating point unit of the Pentium chip. He promptly contacted Intel and Micron about that and asked them to resolve his issue but Intel took some time to respond. And in the meanwhile, Professor nicely emailed his colleagues and editor for various technological magazines about this issue. The editor at the Electronic Engineering Time corresponded with him and soon published an article on the bug around November of 1994. And finally, the bug had become public news. So what was Intel's initial response to this uh, negative publicity gathering bug? It first offered a conditional replacement policy. And then the customer would have to prove to Intel that they were actually affected by this bug. IBM did their own independent study and they reached a vastly different conclusion. And on the basis of their own study, they decided to pause selling PCs with the buggy Pentium. That finally made Intel realize that this uh, bug was uh, much more severe than as they had anticipated. And by 19 December of 1994, they offered a no question asked replacement policy. So let's dive deep into what was the actual failure behind this bug. Now Intel's Pentium chip was uh, using the SRT division algorithm to perform the division in the floating point unit. And that algorithm requires to look up certain hard-coded values from a lookup table. Now the bug was happening because five cells in that table had been accidentally left blank. Academics have pointed out that Khan's SRT division tester and Bryant's PD table checker do exist, but it was not clear if they could be used for checking the Pentiel chip. And that is why it might be the case that Intel had no way of uh, finding the bug. Therefore, I believe that uh, this was primarily a public relations failure. First of all, Intel did not disclose this bug which they had in their floating point unit. Even before Professor Nicely had contacted Intel, the engineers within the company had found out the bug. And finally, the conditional replacement policy. By offering such a policy, Intel decided to act as the arbiter to decide which users were doing work technical enough to deserve a bug-free chip and uh, I believe this was the cause of the public <clears throat> outcry that had resulted. So moving on to the ethical analysis, I believe Intel was using a flawed utilitarian approach as they were trying to maximize the utility or happiness. Now, this is not easy to calculate and uh, by a conditional replacement policy, utility would have been maximized at only those people who actually needed the replacement would get a replacement and a ton of waste would not have happened. But the correctness of the action itself is not considered under utilitarianism. And that is why I believe it is necessary to use another framework also to decide which action to be taken in these scenarios. Now, deontology is a very good ethical framework for this scenario because it considers the correctness of action themselves. Also, we need to use a framework with moral autonomy so that Intel could have uh, decided the correct action to take ethically based on reasoning alone. And we also would have want 
wanted Intel's response to carry a sense of duty. And because of these reasons, Kant's categorical imperative can be applied here to find out which course of action would be would have been better. Those categorical imperatives require two principles to be satisfied. And the first is the principle of universality. We need to consider what if everyone is allowed to hide information about bugs in their product, as Dell was doing. If that is the case, then even Intel suppliers could do that. But if that happened and Intel did not knew the defects in the components that it was receiving, Intel's own chip quality would also deteriorate. And in general, all technological products would become quite unreliable if at every step of the manufacturing process, each individual or the company involved tries to hide information about the shortcomings in their procedure. And therefore, in general, if everyone follows such a maxim, it will lead to an unfavorable outcome. And that is why Kant's categorical imperative would say that uh, this is not the correct action to take and that Intel should have disclosed information about the bug. We also need to look at Intel's actions through the lens of the principle of reciprocity. And uh, the ads of Intel did claim that their chips were of high quality and every customer who bought that chip should have this expectation satisfied. And by their conditional replacement policy, Intel was telling that it was okay for some customers to remain with buggy chips. And by doing that, Intel was using people as a means to an end of achieving high results. And it was not seeing their customers as an end in themselves. And that is why this action also failed the principle of reciprocity. On the basis of that, my recommendation for Intel's executive would have been that uh, they should have uh, taken multiple ethical frameworks into consideration when they were deciding on the right action to take, <clears throat> as then it would have been less likely for the drawback of a specific framework to have to misguide them. As to the industry, I believe that uh, collaborative bug finding and fixing efforts should be encouraged and uh, it would be beneficial for everyone if independent committee was in charge of uh, deciding which bugs need to be hidden and we should disclose information about the rest of the bugs. If this uh, decision was taken by independent committees in place of individual companies, it would be it would lead to a more fairer comparison among different bugs. So in conclusion, but other companies did learn from Intel's mistake. When HP 35 calculator had a bug in, they disclosed the bug and they offered a no questions asked replacement policy immediately. Therefore, in conclusion, the importance of ethics is evident as a timely ethical response from Intel would have saved it from reputational harm. Thank you.